In this movie we introduce some techniques for managing your project-based documentation in DDM 2010.2. From the main DDM user interface we have a folder template already set up for our projects. If we run a search on this we can see a number of projects already opened in DDM. We can expand Project PX1008 and see the folder contents. Notice that we have subfolders, or in DDM terms dividers, set up to help us organize our project-based documents. Here we see a divider which holds the project specification. We'll now create a new project and start to populate it with some documents. We right-click the folder definition, or template, and select New. The Folder Properties window opens, allowing us to add attribute information against the project folder, such as name and description. We use DDM's Auto Numbering tool to allocate a project number. By default, the new project will have a proposed state. In this case, we will skip this lifecycle state and launch this as an active project. Once all attributes are populated, we click on OK to create the folder. Notice that DDM asks us if we want this to be our current working folder. This means that any new items that we create will automatically be added into this folder. A predefined set of folder dividers are also created, giving consistency in folder layout. These are configurable and are defined by the system administrator. We will begin by adding a project specification document. I will create this from the document templates that I have controlled from DDM. In this case, I want to use the create like function to copy the template document. We add attribute information against the document, document name and description, again using auto numbering. And finally, we categorize this document to make it easy to find all project specifications in the future. If we return to the project folder, we find that the new document has been added. We move it to the correct divider and then open it to create our project specification. Once we have made the changes to the document, we store it back to DDM using the application's normal save icon. From the save dialog, we use the overwrite option. And now by checking the document properties, we can see that we have two file versions stored against this record. The original file copied from the template and the edited version that we have just stored. With the document complete, we now change its state from work to released. State change permissions are controlled by the DDM administrator, and for the purposes of this movie, I do have permission to release the document. Now that the document is released, it is protected by DDM and cannot be modified. In reality, changes will be required, and so we need a way to manage this. Let's open the document and make some changes. We change the customer contact and store the changes back. Notice that we're not able to overwrite the existing document, but we can up issue it or create a new revision. In this way, we retain the complete revision history of the document. As we up issue the document, we can also add change note details for audit and reference purposes.
If we now return to the project folder, we can find the new issue at a work state. With the changes now complete, we can release the new revision. You will notice that as the new issue is released, the previous issue changes state to archived. This is a configuration option in the admin tool, but it is helpful to use this option to automatically manage the states of old revisions. By checking the properties of the new issue, we can see all change notes and state change history have been captured, giving us a complete audit trail for the document. We will now take a look at how we add documents to DDM from the file system. In this example we have some site survey photographs that we want to add to DDM. If we open the Windows folder containing the photographs, we can simply drag them into our project folder and add them to DDM. Note that we get an import summary screen open that allows us to modify attributes such as description and category before committing to DDM. We can also request that the originals are deleted from the file system once imported into DDM so that there's no confusion over which is the master copy of the documents now that they're controlled by DDM. It could be helpful to categorize these photographs and so we right click and select the categorize option. In this case I don't have a suitable category to assign them to. However, as a category administrator I can define a new category on the fly which I do now. For this project I want to create a new divider to hold the site survey details. All other dividers were created at an admin level and appear on all project folders of this type. Here I am just adding a divider for this project. Let's take a look now at how we manage emails. We can't drag emails directly out of our email client into DDM. What we need to do is to open a special application that allows us to transfer emails into DDM. This is called AnyDocs and is accessed from the system tray. Again, we get the import summary screen open. This time I want to assign a document number to the emails and so I edit the properties before committing them to DDM. We add the emails to the correspondence divider. Note that we can open the emails directly from DDM. And also notice that any attachments are retained with the email and can also be opened. It is important to understand how powerful DDM can be in organizing and finding information. We will now set up a search for the information in the project that we've just created. From the advanced search window, we can define a search based on the project. We can now save this search as a favorite for later use. We refine this search to look inside the site survey divider.
and again we store this to the favourites. We can now see how quickly and easily we can switch between different projects. This short overview movie shows how DDM can be used to organize and manage your project-based documentation within DDM. For more information, please contact CSI or your local reseller.